it's just this need to be right without making points. And then we talk about if people are willing to have the conversation, but they never really are. They're willing to stand by their side and yell, but nobody actually wants to sit down and look for resolution because people don't make money off of resolution. Let's go! All right, welcome to Citizen. We've got a special guest today, Dave Landau from Normal World. And it isn't. No. It's, it's not, not. It's not a normal world, uh, which explains how you come up came up with the name of the show because we have uh, biweekly or yeah twice weekly. Biweekly def- also means twice le- weekly, but I don't want to confuse the slower people in the audience. So we have a twice <laughs> weekly show on Drinking Bros called Fake News, and it's real news because all the other news is bullshit. Okay, you know it's all trash. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, before we get into everything you're doing now, where'd you grow up? I grew up in uh, Gross Point, Michigan, on the border of uh, Harper Woods, border oh. of Detroit. And there's uh, uh, a pretty famous assassin from there, actually. Yes, John, John Cusack, Cusack yeah. a great, great assassin. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd's pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that was a good movie. I love um, that movie. Yeah. Is it? Do you feel like that? I don't, I don't know if. Gross Point is necessarily a character in the show because it doesn't really talk much about the city, I guess. But what, what was it like growing up there? Uh, it was a border town to a very rough neighborhood, but that's like an enclave of very rich people. And mm. then I was right in the middle. So you were like, if if you were if there are degrees of being from the Detroit area, it's like Eminem at the low level, mid levels you, and then the the upper middle class level is Kid Rock, who's pretending to be white trash. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely... Uh, none of his shtick is real. It's all fake. Like, he grew up in, like, a fucking 5,000 square foot house. Yeah, in Romeo. <laughs> yeah, in Romeo, yeah. <laughs> Which is not really near the city. It's about a half hour away. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like his whole... He's like... He, he was in high school, maybe, and ran into some tough kids, and he was like, you know what? I can do that professionally. Well, yeah, he basically just decided to start spinning records and, you know, where it was very safe, not at, like, a rave or anything. <laughs> and then it, it turned into whatever it is now, where it's, like, a ghetto cowboy yeah. pimp slash... Hey, look, uh, I think they call that a renaissance man. That's actually. right. <laughs> yeah, he's a jack-of-all-trades. <laughs> so uh, what was it like for you growing up there? It's kind of a, an interesting area. It was very, yeah, uh, it was, uh, you could, I mean, it, you saw all sides of life to where you could see some of the richest people that I knew, you know, were people in the automotive industry at the mm-hmm. time and just loaded beyond belief. And then other people that I knew, you know, lived in just kind of burned out houses and their parents sold drugs. So it was just sort of right in that borderline of one side of the street was bad one side of the street was good Mm -hmm. and i was directly right in the middle off of eight mile and harper so i i I like to talk to people about this because i think it's interesting to see and you got a kid now you've got a nine-year-old it's interesting to talk about kind of how things have changed um at different levels of maturity so i think when you were in high school, and I know this is to, uh, to be true for myself. When you were in high school, if somebody had asked you what it, what does it mean to be an American, or what's your favorite thing about being an American, or something to that effect, you would have an answer, right? In high school, yeah, some version of yeah. one. Like, and I think most people in our general age group would have would have had an answer to that question, and I think most of them would have been positive too. That's not the case anymore i I think if certainly this is geographically dependent right if you ask people in west virginia they're going to have something to say i would imagine yeah in a city in any major city in the country i feel like you're going to get more uh i don't knows or negative answers than you would anything approaching like pride or patriotism oh today yeah well yeah it's chic to not you know have any love for your country not that it's not under not that it's not deserved or people sure, have the yeah. right to question it, but well that's 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 a good um debate to have, I suppose it's like a it, to me it's a almost a, a sociological chicken or egg situation um like g k Chesterton said that men didn't love Rome because she was great, Rome was great because the men had loved her right right um and I think that's 
Yeah, you certainly don't want to delude yourself into thinking something's better than it is. Like the point of pride is to like when somebody says, oh, this person clearly takes pride in their house. It doesn't mean that the person is out there fucking having parades. Like, look how cool my house is. It's like, oh, they're t- just taking care of it. That's what it means, right? Yeah, it's just t- yeah, taking care. Well, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of the wording, but just respect for your own property. I mean, just pride of ownership. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, just, for me, that is the chicken egg argument when it comes to when it comes to political philosophy and, and sociology. It's like you don't have the right to bitch about anything unless you're actively trying to solve the problem. Right. Right. Um, and we've got quite a few of those. And that, but the biggest problem is, uh, in my opinion, the biggest problem is our people. They're lazy and stupid. Yeah, they are. So how do you defend against that? Right. I mean, you have to unlazy and unstupid people, which is difficult because people are quite comfortable now, even now with like record inflation, people still won't like, I, I do feel like the Overton window is shifting to some degree more towards populism and stuff, but slightly, even now, people like there's still if you go to uh, the Pacific Northwest, m- I, there's still a lot of masks. You can't go to any hospital without a mask on in the Pacific Northwest right now. Oh, I know. It's just fucking retarded. You right? do. You still see clerks with it. Yeah. It's like the thing you keep in your back pocket all day long is not protecting you from anything. Like it's just it's staggering to me. Mm. But it just shows the effect that it had for the last four years. And people don't. People would rather be stubborn, which is a version of stupid, than right about something. Like, they just would rather stick with their guns. They just want to be right about something, I should say. <clears throat> what do you think that is? Spent cost fallacy, maybe? Like, we've Could come be. this far. We can't turn back now. Or is it just, like, the, the fear of embarrassment for being wrong? I, I think that's what it is. I think it's just not admitting that you were wrong, which is fine. Like, it, just admit you're wrong. People don't have accountability like they once did. And I shouldn't say that one for everybody because it sure as hell didn't. But people just don't have the accountability to check themselves anymore. It yeah. seems. It, like, well, the people that are kind of openly holding themselves accountable, like Cuomo has been in the news lately. Yeah. Still, he's playing. He's like, well, the experts said this. Like, OK, cool. There's a lot of data points here. So let's be fair. Right. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of noise and misinformation coming from the CDC. No question about that. Oh, for sure. Um, but. 45 to 50 percent of the u.s population was like nah now this doesn't make sense like we understand how the socratic method works how basic science works you can't tell me that a drug that's been prescribed 80 million times is dangerous right it also is dirt cheap yeah and like policy. nobody owns it it's it's all cheap like right you can't you can't tell me that you really believe that well right? and they're selling it out of vending machines in mexico just yeah, at the airport yeah, yeah. you can get it very yeah. easily but then in america it became something where it's like you could get weed easier than you could get ivermectin yeah, yeah. yeah they started like uh hospital systems started penalizing pharmacies for prescribing that shit, right right which is you know <clears throat> i like uh i like capitalism more than any of the other economic systems that i've i've seen but it's a problem, I think, when you tell people that they can be as healthy as they can afford to be, and then you put a conglomerate organization in charge of health. Well, and you let politicians mm-hmm. actually buy stock in it. Yeah. Well. That's a massive problem. <laughs> and that's been our issue with healthcare. That's why, like, it's interesting, because you asked me in the beginning what I would say when I was uh, in high school about this country. I was probably pretty angry. Mm. Cause well, about what, specifically? How old are you? Uh, I'm 41. 41, okay. So yeah. you, you graduated in 2000. Uh, 2001, 2001 after five 2001. years. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I liked drugs and alcohol a lot back then. You did then. high school, grad, graduate school, right? Uh, yes, yeah. I just, <laughs> I wanted to get my master's. <laughs> and uh, my dad had, uh, my dad was a really good man and he served in Vietnam, coached all of our teams, all that stuff. And uh, he got Agent Orange in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And they did absolutely nothing to help him once he was, he had a brain tumor. Right. And I mean, it, and it, he just he got hit when I was 13 died when I was 18 and he just suffered with it for years the VA didn't do anything right and mm-hmm. then when I was young my dad had various thoughts on the government where I was just raised like I saw JFK in the theater when I was like eight mm-hmm. so I was kind of just aware of like I had a, somewhat of a distrust for what was going on but a love of country sure yeah and that's what my dad kind of distilled in me was to have a love of your country but that doesn't mean that you can't question the people running it well every time somebody um 
every time somebody with an authoritarian bend, which in my opinion is the vast majority of politicians, yes. right, um, gets into power or gets political capital to do something, it always turns into that. Like, what do you not love your country? Right. Right. It, it's hap- like people during the Iraq war were like, what do you not love America? You don't support the troops. It's like, that's a complete non sequitur when that's not even what we're talking about. Right. You're creating veterans that needn't exist right now that we're not going to take care of. I'm one right. Of them, actually. No, um, I know. Yeah. And so it's like now it's, you have politicians on both sides saying, that we don't care about America if we don't send money to Ukraine and Israel. It's like, all right, man, now that's a bit of a fucking stretch. Of course. Like, you can kind of make that case after 9-11, I guess, to some degree. It wasn't true, right? But you can at least, at least from 30,000 feet. Yeah, at least from 30,000 feet away. It's Sorry. like, oh, that looks, that looks, that kind of makes sense. Right? right. Like, some people that kind of look like that attacked us. This time, nobody attacked us. We're just right. doing it for the funsies, I guess. Yeah, so we're just throwing ourselves in the middle of something that doesn't involve us at all, and we're just sending pallets of cash over because it's easily printable. Mm-hmm. And we're just sky, we're watching skyrocketing inflation, skyrocketing interest rates. And the only people that ever get bailed out of any mess are banks, stockholders, Wall Street. It's every oh yeah I guess a few people that decided to go to college yeah but you know most people don't get any form of a bailout mm-hmm. whatsoever yeah and the soldiers that should be helped like you said you can support the troops by not wanting them to go over there sure and that's what people seem to not understand well you uh, modern politics is a, is a uh, I think. A multi-dimensional paradigm there's no binary politics anymore i don't think right left means anything anymore necessarily so no. but <clears throat> extremism the, yeah for the sake of argument what is how would you classify yourself politically uh i'm definitely somewhat moderate because i don't think either side represents me fully but i mm-hmm. i would definitely say at one point i was liberal or at least democratic mm-hmm. and i'm very far from that now and what do you think like the, the, I guess the running meme is that I've stayed, and Russell Brand talks about this all the time. I've stayed in the same place, and they just moved away from That's me. That's how right? I feel. Okay, and what when you say liberal, what do you mean by that? Uh, I guess just various <laughs> freedoms that I think people should be allowed to have, mm. and I just always kind of looked at it that way. I just thought that it was. I think you should help people. Mm-hmm. I think you should. I think there should be a responsibility somewhat to go out to others. The problem is it's an abused system. Mm. It's the same as, uh, I don't know, you kind of said with the healthcare thing. I wish there was a way to make it work because I actually do believe that people have the right to be healthy and don't need the money to do it. But there's also no education really in it. And like you said, if people are dumb and they're just being used as, I don't know, voters or whatever they need, Mm. cheap, they're not going to actually start taking care of themselves. They're just looking to be taken care of. Sure. So there's a lot of issues with the system. The way that I look at it is, um, I guess why I lean more right is I was on the Anthony Cumia show during the pandemic, um, and I saw a different side of America because I just did not think that was going to happen. I did not think they would shut the country down. When you say you saw a different side of America, you mean you saw um, them become China? Mm. Just everybody buckle down and do what they were told, and then people—it's still like you said, people still wearing masks, yeah, people still buying the bullshit. Cuomo not taking responsibility for the stuff that he said, and I think he should. Yeah, I just saw that Dave Smith was debating him, and I want to watch that. Man, uh, I mean, kudos to Cuomo for doing that because he's going to get annihilated. I mean, it's one thing to even have the conversation in the first place. Um, Patrick bet David kind of softballs people for the most part. That's his style. It's like no, no critique on him necessarily. Um, But Dave doesn't (laughs) No, He's going to fucking light Chris Cuomo up. Of course. I mean, it's going to be rough. So I guess this will be Cuomo's opportunity should he if he wants to keep Dave from really fucking him up he's gonna have to take responsibility because that whole well the experts said this shit is not gonna fly over well yeah like i said no accountability whatsoever Mm -hmm. and he was pushing that really hard i mean he was talking about publicly shaming people and you're stupid it's like well turns out you're stupid yeah and wasn't i don't know wasn't he assaulting a secretary at that point and his brother (laughs) with the nipple rings was destroying an entire country or just destroying new york at the time that was that was a long time ago yes we can forgive that it was Um, it was all of a couple years ago (laughs) yeah it's weird how everybody wants to be forgiven 
now when they were threatening to like end people's careers and put them in prison for not complying with the government. Um, but it, this is something <clears throat> I think and did and did to some degree. Yeah. yeah, it's like this is something we always have to keep a close eye on. Like that, we've all we've always known that there's this is nothing new. The founders wrote about this before the uh, the the danger ever was present, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to your point about let's call it what people call it classic liberalism, uh, we should definitely help people, right? That's, I mean. <clears throat> You can tell a lot about a country by the way it helps the people that need it. Of course. Right? Um, and you can tell a lot about America based on or by how we treat those people, which is essentially like a, I don't know what you call it, like a political indentured servitude. Just enough to keep your mouth and nose above water, but never enough to get out of it. That's um, actually a very good point, yeah. So it's like, what exactly is that? That just seems like slavery with more steps to quote rick and morty right no it is i mean that's really all that it is and i don't know it's it that's kind of where we're at now is where if you're living off of that tiny bit of money and you're living off of the government and you're doing i mean you are essentially just enslaved by them yeah and i talk about this a lot like people are like well how would we and I, i'm i'm more or less, i'm a small l libertarian i don't give a fuck about political people they're gay as hell yeah useless useless human beings but um i agree yeah but i do like i, I like the idea the, the the thing that i like libertarianism conceptually um and the issue that i run into is that people want to live in the conceptual version of it they want they don't want to see it realized practically because being realizing it practically means that you're going to have to start taking some severe responsibility for things, right? Like I know some dudes that are small in stature and will, but who crave chaos. I'm like, no, you don't, bud. I'm telling you, because I've been there. Like we've, we've, you can sign up and go to war and check it out and see how you like it. You can right. go to Somalia for a little while, or go go to fucking Afghanistan or Iraq, or go to fucking Gaza if you want, and you can see what it looks like when things are chaotic, when there's no. Um, when there's no community agreement on how we should live our lives, right? Right. You can see how that goes. And it's it doesn't go well for people who aren't big and strong, frankly. And that's why we set up systems of government like this to make sure that we don't just get ruled by fucking, uh, I don't know, mongoloids. Right? Well, yeah. Well, it's too late. <clears throat> it's definitely too late now, right? But, <laughs> um, but, you know, when you look at down ballot some of these issues, because we have, I think people... Um, for some time now, a lot of people have been single issue voters. Um, a lot of suburban women vote about abortion. Of course. Most of them will never have one, right? right. I don't know why they care. Um, and then uh, a lot of conservatives vote, if you want to even call I don't think there's a thing, uh, there's such a thing as conservative anymore, but they, they vote. Uh, the, the old trope is God, gays, and guns. I don't think that's accurate anymore. I do think the guns thing still exists, but um, <clears throat> so I think it's talking points like abortion yeah, and little things like that that try to get people to champion a side and it allows people to come out in sure. the extremes and say this person thinks this as mm -hmm. long as it's misquoted, especially about something like abortion, especially about things that don't actually affect anybody. Yeah. And that's how they've been stringing people along for years. I think abortion should be taken out of all political talking points. I agree, yeah, because like it it's government can move slow and it does take time sometimes to solve issues but this particular one has dominated american politics for decades right. for half a fucking century now that's been one of the chief talking points and over the past let's call it 30 years now 30 years 35 years um guns have been a big issue as well right um, and it was an issue before. This is something I, I really highly recommend people kind of do some research on the history of gun control because the real, aside from the early part of the 20th century when the FBI started banning uh, machine guns because of gangsters and shit. Yeah. Um, the bigger pushes. Yeah, Tommy guns and yeah, all that yeah, stuff. The, the, the bigger pushes in gun control came because uh, the government was afraid of Black Panthers arming themselves. Right. Right. Um, and then it's like that old poem first they came for the socialists that wasn't the socialist side didn't say anything right um 
I think everybody, this is it. And I, I want to have like <clears throat> realistic, objective debates about this stuff because I think there is resolution somewhere. Um, on the gun thing, like on the one side, banning guns or giving the state power, come on, man, get the fuck out of here. But right. the people who are the, the just slam their hand on the desk and yell, shall not infringe, while I sympathize with that position. It's like, all right, cool. Well, let's have that conversation and explain why that's the case. Because I think most people can think of somebody in their head right now that should not own a firearm. I just yes. like anybody that's walking around in Seattle right now that has blue hair and wearing the wrong gender clothes. And that's how I feel about abortion. Right. Like those turn into people. <laughs> and most of them are useless. So it's not really my business <laughs> if we nip a couple in the bud before yeah. it. <laughs> Oh, it's a terrible stance to supposedly yeah. have, but I don't really. It's like it's not my business. You I, know? Yeah, I couldn't care less about that. I don't like people. Like as a con, <laughs> yeah. as a concept, I think it's bad when we have, um, well, when no. we have escape clauses written into biology, right? Whether of it's whether it's Ozempic, I, I don't think that's good. I think it's going to fuck a lot of people up. Oh, it's really going right? to. Well, especially people with diabetes that can't get it. Because yeah, right. the only way they're going to lose weight is getting yeah. their feet removed. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, look. It worked for uh, a lot of people. but <laughs> No, it did. But yeah. it's just like, it's amazing how you can just jump in line in front yeah. of someone who needs yeah. it. You're like, I'd like yeah. to shed a few LBs. And someone's like, I, I really need this to live. Yeah. And I do, I do think, uh, like, just... In principle, I'm. I don't like the idea of abortion for that reason. It's of like, course. all right, well, you're you're going to great lengths to try to uh, make it okay to be irresponsible, and that's not a good. It's never a good thing, right? It's his birth control, and yeah. that's the problem. And then you have people who actually brag about how many they've had, and they yeah, look at it as virtue, weird. and it's like that's not yeah. a good thing. And I don't. So this is where I get stuck in this part of the argument because the religious right believes that. To some degree, depending on when they believe it happens, but they believe that uh, a soul from heaven goes into that fetus. Right. And I don't believe that, right? Because that's not my belief. It's just not my belief system. So I always reach an impasse in these in these arguments with people because um, it's like, well, I don't believe what you believe, so obviously I'm not going to reach the same conclusion. Right. But that's the point of federalism is a decentralization of power. You know what I mean? Um well, of course, the, there are there are reasonable limits. I don't think RFK did himself any favors last week talking about fucking just cutting a baby's head off when it pops out. You know what I mean? No, I, I'm I'm doing a show with him actually on Wednesday, mm. and uh, yeah, it's I saw that too. But I think there's also that point where you're like being pressured in an interview where you're just kind of speaking out of your ass, and I think that's what he did. If I'm being honest, where yeah. he's just like, yeah, I guess at nine months, which I think is absurd. Like if you can't make a choice at nine months. You've you've made the choice to have a baby. Right. Like you can't yeah. just get it killed. That's yeah. not. It. But I mean, if you do, you should at least have to hire Italians or something, right? Right. Like just do, you do gotta it. Whack be, it. Be classy. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> throw little cement shoes on <laughs> it. Clint, instead of <laughs> take your fetus to an Italian yeah. restaurant, put its bronze shoes on it. Yeah, just have <laughs> microcoli <laughs> only. <laughs> leave it in the leave it in the chair, the high yeah. chair, while you go get a gun yeah. from the bathroom. I mean, it's silly, but I think. Everybody knows that at some point it becomes a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, and a lot of folks refuse to admit that, and a lot of folks on the right refuse to negotiate the point. And I guess I don't, I don't know if I, if I believed what they believe, maybe I would feel the same way about that, right? But I've also, uh, like, I've, I've gone, I went to seminary, right? So I understand this, these texts a little bit better than the average person when. Of course. When when Jesus says give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, he's talking about man man or uh, human control over governments, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think like the point of that is don't legislate morality. That's not the point. And I think legislating morality is actually not only f fucking authoritarian to a large degree. <clears throat> it also doesn't work. You know? Well, because it's different morals. Yeah. Yeah, so who who are we to tell anybody else what to do? And then the argument, the counter argument to that would be, well, who are you to tell somebody not to murder somebody else? I'm like, all right, cool. A crime requires a victim, and mm -hmm. the victim cannot be yourself, and it cannot be the state, right? You can't like if you if you create this list of crimes and they only apply, the only victim is the state. Then the state can just accuse you of a crime whenever they feel like it. That's Russia. That's China. That's how that works right. there, right? So that can't be possible. Um, and and you know. Then over to the gun side 
of the debate. And I just think it's an interesting debate to have, but everybody knows somebody, maybe personally, maybe not personally, maybe somebody you see on TV on a regular basis that should not own a firearm. They're too dumb, right? To, of course. To be responsible for that. So the, the second question to that, okay, who adjudicates that? Because it can't be the state, because the state will then just say you're dumb or whatever criteria. They'll make a, they'll make a criteria. The VA tried to do it a couple of years ago. Oh, for gun it, ownership? Yeah. Uh, like is if, it uh, if just a, a vets? For vets, yeah. Okay. It was like if <clears throat> they, they passed a rule, internal rule, where they would declare someone mentally incompetent if they couldn't manage their own finances, right? So if somebody had to file for bankruptcy, for example, mm -hmm. or something like that, and they were getting VA benefits, um, then technically speaking, they would be declared incompetent, which is to say mentally incompetent, which is not the case, right? Right. Um, no, a lot of people and then, lost and then everything. That would, give, that would give a local jurisdiction the right to go seize their weapons, literally, which is fucking, that's, that's insane to me. It's terrifying. So it can't be the state, but so who is it? I mean, <clears throat> personally, I like to empower private business to handle that kind of stuff right um, but most of the guns used in crimes are stolen from dumbasses who leave their gun in their car yeah or even a safe in their own home by yeah. the kid that goes to school and like i i mean growing up in detroit i saw a lot of gun violence just at random you know and i and i when i learned to shoot i had a marine teach me mm -hmm. and i mean other than like a shotgun or whatever but I had a Marine teach me. I had to unload every weapon, load every weapon, learn about it. Like, I wanted to make sure I was 100% aware of what I was doing. And I don't know if a lot of people share that and they realize the danger of what they're mm -hmm. actually holding. I mean, I had a friend who got shot in the hand trying to slam a basketball by a stray bullet when on Seven Mile and Mac in high school. I have a friend that was shot in the head and had his Bronco stolen on Seven Mile and Gratiot in Detroit. He lived because he's Albanian. <laughs> But uh, they're impossible to kill. Yeah, they are very. They have at least at least nine lives, and uh, he got up. But the number of people who I knew that had been like a, somewhat of a victim of gun violence from just morons having illegal guns was pretty pretty insane in the nineties. And I don't know what the I don't know if it's gotten any better. And I don't. And I think that the laws need to exist to keep them out of the hands of those people. However, that happens. <clears throat> Well, unfortunately, criminals don't obey laws, right? Well, that's what I mean. Writing something down on paper just has literally no effect. Right. Unfortunately. Well, I mean, it'd be nice if it was like some wizard bullshit, but <laughs> right. that's just like, not how it goes. Not... So, you know, um, that's why I like to, like you. It's a good point, pe actually. People just were, were like absolutely refuse on the, on both sides of this issue to walk this conversation down to the bitter fucking end, mm -hmm. like address every little detail. We know that criminals don't obey laws. Okay. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have them. Like you've got to have recourse against somebody who breaks the law at some point. Right. But it has to just be at least a punishment for yeah. the action. There's gotta be something, but you can't depend on that solely, uh, for, for prevention, prevention yeah. Yeah, for a prophylaxis. So, uh, then people would say, well, what about the police? Okay, cool. There's 750,000 sworn officers in the country. Um, there are 350 million people. That's one officer every 450 or so people. That's not the span. I don't know if you've ever gone to business school or anything, but span of control is, is about three to five, not 466, right. which is what this comes out to be. So, <clears throat> and then of course there's, uh, you know, the, the, the facts as they are, are these, we have 400 to 500 million guns in circulation to some degree. We have 350 million people. We have a limited amount of police, and what ability they have is is there's a ping, right? It takes mm -hmm. time for them to get there. You can are a first responder, so I think part of the this is from the 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 gun owner side. I would encourage people that if you want this right, you have to accept the responsibility, and that means you are obviously competent with your weapon and safe with it right but it also means that you make sure that people around you are also competent and safe with their weapons like you if you want to live in the world where you get to carry your gun everywhere you go and i do right mm -hmm. then you need to advocate for the right stuff and and the right stuff isn't just yosemite sam firing his revolvers into the air right because fuck you this is america no it's like all right cool this is a responsibility this is a treat it like a uh, you would a heavy piece of machinery you wouldn't let some asshole come drive your bulldozer Right. No, and you, I mean, just what people have weaponized anyway because they can't get a gun. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah. So I, I, I just think these 
people think that these are unsolvable issues and I, maybe they are right. Maybe, maybe, maybe balkanization is the only way to solve some of this stuff to some degree, but we're not even trying. We're not even having the full conversation. That's what I mean by stubbornness. Mm. Like is it's just this need to be right without making points. And then we talk about if people are willing to have the conversation, but they never really are. They're willing to stand by their side and yell, but nobody actually wants to sit down and look for resolution because people don't make money off of resolution. They yeah, make money off of conflict. What's that phrase? Uh, solved problems don't get out the vote. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really the point of having politicians at this point. It's just to be divided. I mean, it seems like... Um, it seems like uh, almost similar to the way the Catholic Church kept everyone illiterate for so long. Yeah, I was raised Catholic. Right. I was illiterate until so, I was 20. From, <laughs> from uh, the beginning, from Peter until uh, 1511, when the King James Version was finally printed in right. English, you either had to learn Latin, which means you were wealthy or educated or both, mm -hmm. or go fuck yourself. You had to talk to the priest and he could say what the fuck he wanted. Who knows what those guys were saying Oh yeah. before, especially like yeah, they were if just you were a priest, whatever they needed. Dude, if you were a priest at a parish in like fucking middle of nowhere Wales or something, you could tell those assholes anything. Like, oh, yeah. oh, Jesus said to fucking, oh, see what time it is. Yep. yep. 12 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the fuck? Look, it says give me 12 bucks. Like Matthews. <laughs> I mean, he fucking, they just made up plenary indulgences. Mm -hmm. Has made it up. It's like as soon as the copper in the well rings, the soul from Purgatory Springs, they ran a protection bracket of numbers game on Purgatory, which is genius for sure. I didn't know this. But it's super <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, was it St. Ignatius or something that started okay. that bullshit, I think? Yeah. When the, co when the coin, when the copper in the well, the, the copper coin, when the copper in the well rings, the soul from Purgatory Springs, that's the old. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> Which is good marketing. It oh, rhymes. It's great. Yeah. It addresses all the key points and it rhymes. People that own wishing wells are still <laughs> making money off of that. Yeah. But That's I think. I didn't know that was the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Until <laughs> King James selectively edited a bunch of shit into English, right? To fit oh, his, yeah. To fit his stuff. But the King James Version of the Bible is 1511. So you're talking about 1500 years. Yeah. After where, the original text. Yeah. Where the church. Well, not just after the original text, but 1500 year period where the church controlled everything. Like nobody knew any. Nobody could question him. And then. Uh, uh, 1511 rolls around and then later part of the 16th century you've got Henry VIII and Martin Luther's over in Germany he's like hey I learned to read this is bullshit you guys yeah. have been talking shit this and then Joseph this Smith is like look what I found in <laughs> upstate New York oh my god it's a, guy. It's a um, third but that's what's going on in politics now if you look at like the process that it takes to even become elected the process that it takes to pass bills the way they do these omnibus bills um, the tax code all of this stuff has been intentionally made super complicated to be a barrier to entry for anybody that would have just a normal opinion about something, right? Mm -hmm. It is the entry fee to join the aristocracy, and most people will never get there unless you sell your soul or become independently wealthy. Mm -hmm. So to me, it feels like we're just doing the same thing again. This time, people are just cheering for the people who are doing it to them. Like, I fucking love this politician. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? That's like rooting for the umpire. Yes. Get the fuck out of here. No, th that's the problem is we people cheer on what goes against their own interests. Then the blind allegiance to whatever your group is or whoever your guy is, is killing this country because you're not willing to look at anybody else or listen to anybody else. You just believe everything they say and everything they say. It's, it's a leader. It's human. They're full of shit to some degree. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about, um, <clears throat> and just to preface, um, there is no choice between Trump and Biden. Biden is retarded and controlled by fucking crazy globalist people who are definitely... I don't understand how it's happening. Yeah, either... Like, I like Hanlon's razor. Don't imply malice where co incompetence will suffice, but this is clearly malice, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then Trump is does a lot of stuff I don't like, uh, but obviously he's the only option right now, I, in my opinion. Um, He's going to be the one that you vote for. Sure, yeah. But, I mean, but then, then you like Trump doubles down on the support of the vaccine and shit. And he also doesn't admit to the fact that he's the one that shut down the country. And yeah, neither did yeah, the yeah. people that voted for him, which bought, well, not yeah. everybody, but mm -hmm. a lot of the MAGA herd doesn't want to admit that. Well, I don't understand why they see criticism of the man as disloyalty. Like, my loyalty is to the Constitution, not to an individual, and so should yours be, right? Absolutely. That's kind of how we do things here. So, 
if you stray away from the constitution like you're loyal to your spouse i love my spouse she loves me so on and so forth we get into an argument maybe we disagree about something we have different positions yeah there's going to be some we're going to say that you should otherwise you're going to fucking hate each other over time yeah of course you're going to disagree and then you're going to talk about it and then hopefully come to some resolution that doesn't mean you're disloyal it's that that part to me these loyalty tests with anybody is like a huge red flag for me not for the politician necessarily although trump does require that and it is a red flag in his regard yes but for the people who refuse because he also is desperate to be liked in my opinion right just like any of these other fucking megalomaniacs that run for office that is the point that gives people the power right Mm -hmm. like that's the it isn't always obvious what your power is as a citizen of a community sometimes it is literal force and sometimes it's just like tinkerbell the government's power only exists if you allow it to in a lot of ways right there's Mm -hmm. way fewer of them than there are of us so it's like being critical especially of the person you support draws them closer to the fucking actual constitution that should be the point it's not disloyalty but that's how it's read always like you get if you come after trump you just get hammered by maga people oh which is bizarre to me because the whole maga the whole purpose of maga was to drain the swamp and go back to constitutionalism right it's like all right well cool well, if he varies out of that pathway shouldn't we bring him back in too or is he just exempt from all this i don't understand it well and with rfk like i had him on my show and people that were fans of the show were never ever going to watch again because i just talked to somebody who wasn't trump and just their knee-jerk reaction was just to be pissed off who was it that you talked to it was just people that left comments that were diehard MAGA fans, mm. diehard Trump fans. But who were they? What were they bitching about? The fact that I talked to them. Oh, really? Yeah, gave them a platform. And you see, the, but that's the level, to, level of loyalty that he actually has. Like, there, is, there are <clears> some people that are just so completely pro him that they're not willing to look at anything that he's done. And I don't think that he can be better at his job unless we're being honest about what he's done wrong. He, he does not... He, he never takes responsibility or really apologizes that's my issue with trump but i think he did a good job i think that he ended up with a lot of crap on his plate and Mm -hmm. now i think a lot of people should vote for him just based on the fact that they're trying to get it so you can't yeah yeah i mean well that's that's another whole point the more uh the more the media tells you you should care about something, the less you should care about it. And the inverse of that is also true. Mm. And then if all the institutions are telling you that somebody's dangerous, that probably means they're dangerous to those institutions and not to you typically. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, and I don't give a fuck about any of those institutions evaporating forever. Neither do right? I. Like the, I don't think the federal government should exist in the form that it does. We, there's no constitutional authorization for a standing army. There is for a Navy, mm-hmm. right, to secure shipping and transportation and shit like that, 100%. Navy and the Marine Corps, that in case we have to interdict like that, sure. But we have a million-man standing army now. And when you fucking buy a fancy new toy, you're going to want to use it all the time, mm-hmm. right? Especially when it's making your friends and you money. It's like... <clears throat> there aren't any there aren't many people in politics that are actively trying to reduce the size of government like maybe mike lee definitely thomas massey Mm -hmm. right and then we'll see if uh justin uh amish gets elected in your state in detroit or in michigan rather yeah which would Um, be really nice yeah it would be nice yeah he's definitely he's definitely one of those guys but he would be the only one in senate the only one. Yeah. Everybody else is voting for every. Send money to everybody. Fuck it, mm-hmm. dude. We got plenty. Look, we just made some more. It's like we didn't make it. Making money used to mean generating a product or service that somebody else would put, give you money for. Right. Now it means just fucking printing it. Which just devalues the dollar. You're yeah. actually losing money every time you do it. <laughs> oh, my God. It's staggering. Well, not... Not everybody's losing money every, every time. So no, the Black people Rock that are and State rate, Street. I was going to say the people fun. that are piped in. Yeah, of course they're going to make money. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's a lot of bitching about stuff. Um, I'm I'm curious uh, your
your thoughts because you you guys satirize most things but you're a, yeah. you're a smart dude it's like where do you see this country going right now is there any kind of potential for bringing it back into the fold a little bit i think about that a lot and i don't know i really don't know i i see it in a very bad place you know i even have a joke in my act where my son's like you know putting him to bed and it's like you know what i want to be when i grow up and i'm like oh son it, it doesn't matter there's not going to be a you growing up. There's not going to be a future, you know, and there, that is a black pilled way of looking at it, but it's just kind of one angle because I don't really know what we're going to do at this point because mm-hmm. it seems that people are so rabidly stupid that I, I don't know if there's ever going to be a way where we can actually come to conclusions on things. Sure. I'd like there to be. I mean, because we're going to we're going to lose. I mean, it's not even just this country; it's the planet. It's yeah. everything. We're all we're going to go away as a species if this is the trajectory that we keep going in. And I, I, it's very hard to talk to anybody about politics or what they think or what you think should be done. Like you said, you know, especially from kind of that middle right libertarian mm-hmm. mindset. People are locked into what they want to believe, or they're so afraid if they don't believe it and don't regurgitate it, they're going to somehow get in trouble for having a difference of opinion. And that's a complete danger to our society. Well, I think <clears throat> I think that comedy plays a big role in this. It helps right? a lot. So it's like, uh, if you think about some of the bigger positive and negative changes that have happened through human history when it when it comes to government um <clears throat> a lot of the reforms in in england leading up to uh uh, uh what, what what i would consider to be uh, a political revolution there was whatever you believe about shakespeare whether it was one, uh, uh, an executive producer who had a bunch of fucking writers or right. if he's just a prolific writer right whatever you believe this motherfucker like subversive play after subversive play. I don't know how he stayed alive. He must've been having sex with somebody at court. There's only that like, or something. He had something on right. somebody. Cause he just lit the fucking royalty up for years. And oh, never, yeah. Macbeth, Hamlet, yeah, like, everything. Nobody ever got to him. Who like, who is this guy? But <clears throat> I think that played a really important role. I think that, um, a lot of the satirical writers in, in Paris at the time played a big role in the French revolution um, especially amongst the aristocracy who the French revolution was kind of interesting because it wasn't necessarily an uprising of people as the aristocracy being like, you know what? We've, this is stupid. We can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. They decided themselves to, to make everything okay, which is interesting because we borrowed so much from them. Um, and then you see the inverse of that. Like when, when authoritarianism begins in a place or expands in a place, like the Cultural Revolution in China or, uh, you know, one of the first things the Nazis did was round up playwrights and fucking newspaper people and all this stuff. It's like, well, you're not talking shit about us, right? And yeah, it, they, and it happened going here. Going after all the Jews didn't help. Yeah, well. I mean, you're getting rid of a lot like, of comics. That's a target-rich environment, I yeah, suppose. I know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's a lot of comics. And then, you know, more recently here, <clears throat> I think there was a soft attempt at, attempt at that. Now, I don't think that the power, powers to be in America were necessarily targeting those people because they're like, well, it worked for the Nazis or whatever. I don't think they were thinking that. That's um, that, I don't mean to say that. What I do mean to say, though, is that it is kind of a natural target to go after people who satirize things. Because and it, to call them Nazis was pretty staggering by people who resemble them a lot more. Yeah, wild stuff. And we talked about Cuomo before and shaming. Like, Rogan took a lot of heat. I don't know if a you remember ton. when he got covid um, CNN put a picture of him that was desaturated mm-hmm. to make him look sicker. Yeah, he like, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me! I really, yeah, like <laughs> this dude, like uh, uh, leg presses like a thousand pounds. He's gonna be fine. I don't think a little cold is gonna take him out, man. No, and they also thought that he didn't have the audience to just immediately tweet out, "That's not my picture," mm-hmm. and be <laughs> called on it. Yeah, but that's, it's, that's what they really are afraid of, though, is the fact that a lot of these. Uh, fringe, I mean, not that he is, he's mainstream at mm. this point, but it's like a lot of these fringe <laughs> shows are bigger than the mainstream media that they use to keep us prison, imprisoned, really. Yeah, they really are, the, now especially. And I think uh, 
I don't know that they anticipated all of that. Like a lot of things have happened. Scared the shit out of them. Yeah. A lot of things have happened to make Hollywood more or less irrelevant now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, Not just socially, but practically and financially as well now. Mm -hmm. Um, So people are going out on their own now. I don't think that the powers that be in the U.S. really saw that coming, frankly. Like there was a confluence of things like the Me Too movement fucked it up a lot, right? Big time. Um, but also uh, just wokeness in general. Comedy's got to be comedy. I watched Step Brothers yesterday. Mm-hmm. I was bored in the middle of the day, and it was on fucking whatever streaming service I had. I'm like, oh, that's funny. I'll just flip it on in the background while I'm cleaning my guns, right? Mm-hmm. It's a very American thing to do. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, one of the characters is consistently calling the other character a faggot the whole time, right? Mm-hmm. This isn't that long ago. It was like fucking 12 years ago, yep. maybe something like that. It's like, all right, cool. I mean, it, that's a character doing something, and we all relate to that because that's how we grew up, so it's funny to us, right? Everybody had that. Yeah. So, But now it's like that's you can't do that anymore. And I don't know if it was I, – I, I, I find it very difficult to tell sometimes whether this invasive cultural Marxism stuff is a, a, a point target or an area target. Like an area target means – like think of a machine gun that just mm-hmm. fires a big spray of bullets versus a point target, which is like a single shot, right? Um, I can't tell if they're specifically trying to fuck over satire and comedy like that or if it's just a result of cultural Marxism. Maybe it's just a result. But either way, the result is the same. Yeah, I think maybe it was supposed to be precise but then just ended up spraying everywhere, and that was largely their problem. I mean, when you look at all the cancellations that did happen with comedians, and you can use, like, Shane Gillis as an example, yeah. Rogan. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe is actually a good example because he's somebody where they used a thing where he used racial slurs, and uh, now yeah. he just sold out yeah. the garden two nights in a row. Yeah, with one of the guys who he used a racial slur against. Right. Hans, right? Right. <laughs> it's like Because it turns out <laughs> they, it, that he was part of it. <laughs> and, but that's when they go after anybody and they try to convince people. And then you have a rise up of this other side mm. where it's just not really funny and it's not really satire and it's sort of lockstepping with what the government wants you yeah. to do. I mean, it's a court jester who's too afraid of the king. That's what it Which is. is right? And it's, it's usually a global thing. Like yeah. Hannah Gatsby is an American. Yeah. But she's kind of speaking in that you're not allowed to self-deprecate. You're not allowed to do... Like, her entire first set that everybody nutted over, uh, I'm forgetting the name, Nanette, Mm. was seriously telling white guys and black men what they can't say on stage for an hour. That's... That's got to be some kind of a target, whether you realize it or not. Yeah. Like whether she knows she's doing it or not. Mm-hmm. But this, it's a, it's a whole <clears throat> movement that's is. just prejudice and bias. Yeah, it's it's uh, what what uh, um, ma- it's manufacturing consent, right? I'm sure yeah. you've heard that phrase before. Mm-hmm. But the the end, the desire to end state for manufacturing consent is where people are so nervous about the consequences that they will self-censor. That way your job is done. You don't have to be there. It's a a force multiplier for censorship, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And that is particularly nefarious. And a lot of people are blaming it on middle-aged white women now, which is probably true, right? I mean, it's not probably true. It's definitely true to to a, a large degree. But I don't accept that. Like, Bill Burr went on plenty of rants about this. And he is right that they're the ones doing the complaining and shit. But you're the one being a bitch about it. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people complain about a lot of stuff, and we ignore the fuck out of them. Why all of a sudden did a short haircut and popping two kids out of your puss make you an expert on comedy? Right. You know what I mean? Just shut the fuck up. That, that is a perfectly reasonable thing to say. <laughs> hey, you know what? You don't know what you're talking about. And I also don't care. So fuck off, right? So well, it's like, yeah. I, to me, it is a more of a man issue. Right. Because men can be men in the traditional masculine sense without the presence of women. That's completely possible. Women cannot be feminine without men around because they don't like if, if they are know how to be friends. <laughs> that, yeah, certainly that uh, if they, if if a woman is like in a true feminine state, then she's not worried about existential threats and stuff. She's focusing on the work that needs to get done nurturing wise right right uh, and that can't happen unless there are walls with guards on them that's just how it has to happen and those do yeah. those guards are men so 
I blame dudes. I, it's it's fashionable now, especially in the on the conservative, the trad side, the fucking blame women. Oh, let's women shouldn't be voting. It's like, well, why don't we just like why don't you shut the fuck up and lead by example and lead mm-hmm. like be a leader instead of bitching that you're getting culturally defeated by the weaker sex as from your perspective, right? Like really, that's so that's your plan is to uh, disabuse them the right to vote instead of just leading. That's pussy bullshit to me. Like, I can't get on board with that. Or show them why. Yeah. I mean, that's part, you know, a lot of women don't want to break down, for example. Like, let's say you look at Hollywood and you kind of lean left. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple years ago, before Harvey Weinstein, I mean, everybody sort of knew about it. Tarantino's the only one who admitted it, but the rest, you know. But that's a side thing anyway. But you see that when you go, look, they're kind of going after the kids. They don't really want to believe that the entertainment that they're providing for their children is actually doing them damage. Right. And there's actually these sure. things that are <clears throat> subliminal inside of it. I mean, it's definitely difficult to look back over the last five years of your life and the decisions you made for your children and be like, oh, my God, I fucked my kid up. Dude. Right? That sucks. Well, I mean, it, certainly uh, it would be hard to admit. All I have to do is watch the Dan Schneider documentary and go, now what do you think? Yeah. Like, this is what I'm trying to tell you. But that's what exists there. <clears throat> and it's not that everybody there are pedophiles. It's, not, it's just that everybody there has a narcissism and mm. is power hungry that are in those positions of power over these networks. Sure, yeah. And a lot of them are complete perverts. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them don't care what they're feeding into the kids except for what they want them to think. Yeah. So the fact that that's allowed can kind of show people, look, this is my problem with these people. This is my problem with this side. I think uh, I, I think more women actually are coming around mm. than before. And I think it's, it is an easy scapegoat, but there's always a scapegoat. White men, white women, whatever it might be. There's always somebody, sure. black men in the 90s, <clears throat> whatever it was, whatever you want to go after. They're always going to find a villain because it's easy for everybody to unite over hate than unite over logic. Sure, yeah. yeah, 100%. <clears throat> it's also true that... Um, and from, in my opinion, that that type of egocentricity makes for strange bedfellows, right? Because mm-hmm. in your mind, logically, you're like, oh, well, why would that person, what does that person have anything to do with that person, right? Well, when you're up to no good, it's a matter of who's going to accept this behavior, right? And I think there are these little trade-offs, like, hey, I'm going to go proselytize your children about cutting their dicks off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. then the fucking pedophiles show up, and they put a little circle on their flag. It's like really like you're yeah and you're okay with that yeah, it's like come on man like what but it makes <clears throat> even even at the higher levels where people are just generally predators it still makes for for uh, uh strange bedfellows because here's what they're not going to do they're not going to fucking turn somebody in and risk themselves getting caught right that's just not going to happen so now you have this big fucking literal circle jerk going on in a massive industry that has huge amounts of influence and here we are right and because they don't want to be caught, they're going to continue to go for weaker and weaker mm. because it's easier to hide. <clears throat> that's why it just follows a line. Well, and so, to some degree, that's a lot of how uh, how a lot of this started, right? If you remember the first big case uh, for the for the Catholic Church in a, in America wasn't in Boston; it was in Wisconsin, a school for the deaf and blind in the yeah. 1950s, right? Uh, I'm sure everybody's. If you haven't seen that documentary, I would highly recommend it because it's fucked up. But the first known target was this school for the deaf and blind in the 1950s and 60s and they were just straight raping the fuck out of kids yeah because they were retarded or fucking blind or deaf they couldn't tell anybody hot well <laughs> yeah <laughs> depends on your uh yeah i just yeah a big helen keller fantasy um, uh, but that's like say water for, for, <laughs> oh she helen keller's a fraud dude. oh i know there's no way there's, no. D- does anybody believe that no, I don't know how you could, where okay. she's just like touching the, the, I guess, owner's hand. Is that the word? And she's just like, what she's saying is that, you know, there's yeah. two forks in a road. It's like, shut up. Yeah, she's, not say- she's just tickling your hand. Like she, she was deaf, dumb, and blind. She never, like, you wouldn't even have language, right? You, you wouldn't, wouldn't understand have any what language reference is. of anything. Yeah, so there's no anyways. They also no, said it- she flew a fucking plane. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, was it Amelia Earhart? <laughs> Maybe she was <laughs> flying Amelia's plane, and that's where that went down. No, that's such a complete lie, and people yeah. do believe it. But it, it and the lady yeah. who actually uh, 
scooped her up. What's it called? I guess. The miracle worker. Is yeah, the miracle worker. She's shit? known yeah. as a con artist oh, up until God, that yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> so then, well, hey, you know, it's like this is I work miracles. Yeah. Well, she did. She fucking yeah. convinced millions of people to believe some obviously stupid bullshit, <laughs> right? right? Which like, is a miracle in its own she right. She has so. four degrees. How? <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're just in a bubble of, like, nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. she could just have... Maybe they're all honorary degrees. Well, that's true. Like, yeah. Cosby, yeah. they might take him back at some point. But he's the only one out there. Well, he's not the only one, actually. I think Jesse Jackson is an honorary degree, and he calls himself Dr. Reverend as well. Does he really? I think so, yeah. I feel like that's such a douche move to get a fake doctor degree and then <laughs> demand that people call you that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so, yeah, they definitely, like, whether it begins there or not... It ultimately has to go to preying on the weakest among us. Right? No, and it's it exactly what happens in all those systems. Mm-hmm. I mean, it also it's happened. It's like a pr- self-preservation kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Boys Town in Nebraska. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a huge problem. And I mean, the, that's the natives up in Canada as well. Uh, the the schools that were in like the middle part of Canada, in uh, 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 on the western side of Ontario, were just like beating kids. Oh, yeah. And sexually assaulting them until they fucking assimilated into white culture, basically. Well, and even Sinead O'Connor, when she breaks down why she ripped up a picture of the Pope, Mm -hmm. and you look at what she was doing, it was extremely noble, but Mm -hmm. people just had that knee-jerk reaction of complete anger. And I mean, I was raised Catholic, so a ton of people in my neighborhood did, too. But not questioning the church was always something I didn't understand, especially when I found out about the things going on in the priesthood. Yeah. Well, you should definitely be... so. There, there are, there's a hierarchy, right? And at the top, it's going to be your principle. And it, whether the principle is a, a religious, like a god or whatever the fuck, right? Or mm-hmm. if it's just a philosophical principle. Uh, for us, for me, rather, it's the Constitution. But then there's going to be people who are, to some degree, arbiters of that, uh, translators of that, right? Intellectuals and things like that who, who you know, distill things, who, who you know make up thought experiments to give practical exam. That's what a parable is. That's why the Bible's written the way it is. Right. Right. Um, So it's, that stuff is useful, but anytime anybody says that I, as a man, a human being, right, is uh, I'm in charge of this and you have to go through me to get there. That's a fucking problem. Whenever there's a direct pipeline to God. I mean, that's when you have David Koresh. That's when you have, I mean, it, it does break into cult, but there are actually, like you said, much larger groups and much mm. larger religions where that is the case, where yeah. there is a leader who talks directly to the divine. Yeah, yeah. And it's I mean, like, that's Scientology. That's yeah. There's a lot of it. And it's crazy how... It's crazy how the the one dude who's the conduit, God never says, like, hey, you're fucked up. You need to correct yourself. Mm-hmm. It's weird, right? Yeah, it seems odd that, yeah, <laughs> there's no flaws not at once, all. <laughs> not <laughs> once in 2,000 years of the church since Peter has uh, somebody been bad. Like... You don't think that uh, that God may have had, should you believe in God, that God had some issue with Pope Pius being an absolute coward during World War II about the Jews? Like, he he maybe should have said something. He something. rained some shit on people. Yeah. But you're right. Mm. I mean, the whole part of the, the Bible, too, and I do believe in God, but mm-hmm. it's like I, the whole part of the Bible is that people, it gets criticism because a lot of people will say that it embraces the weak. But I also think that it embraces the sinner. And I think mm-hmm. that's what everybody is. We're all flawed. We all do things that isn't sure. right. Whether you believe it's literal sin that's going to send you to hell or just flaws because you're a human being, that and, lesson still exists. And I think there's a gap to that. I think yeah. people mistake the two. <clears throat> I think you're allowed I think you're allowed to be mad at God. I think mm-hmm. you're allowed to pray and be pissed. I, I mean, Job been. wasn't thrilled. I mean, God told him to fuck off, but he still got mad. Right. right. Yeah. But I think you have the right to go like, I'm fucking mad at you today. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that's a problem. Because if you don't go through that those steps and be honest, why would you lie to a creator? Sure. And it's lying you, to yourself. You wouldn't treat any other relationship like that. So why yeah. would you just bow down instead of ask? And I think I think that's where people... I think the word... Uh, when you hear God-fearing, mm. it's a problem because I think there's a lot of love in the Bible, mm. and I think there's a lot of love in the relationship that you have. So I think the idea of just being afraid of your creator or being scared to think anything else is a problem it's where we're at even now Mm. with society Mm. a lot of the mask shit was just a religion and being afraid to care about anything else a lot of the i mean i didn't get the vaccine because i grew up with a mom who was an rn she was bipolar Mm. i had to wash my hands like i was howard hughes 
Like, it's just how I was raised. And the idea that you were going to rush a vaccine, and I have all the other ones, through, call it Operation Warp Speed, and use human beings as guinea pigs, made absolutely no sense to me. Mm. And then you see, now you see the side effects. You've seen people go in front of parliament and say that it was a lie. And you see all this proof <coughs> of what shouldn't have existed. But nobody want, But anybody on the other side doesn't want to look at that logically. Yeah. Not, not only, like, I mean, it's everything was just, man, it was all made up. Right. We know that the six-foot rule is completely made up. It's absurd. Like, they just made it up. It's like, what, what will people accept? That's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And I think back to your other point, if you're top-level authority, and I mean, I'm talking about you as an individual, you personally, if you're top-level authority, if your relationship with that authority is authoritarian and not uh, complementary, right, or or based in a more something more positive than authoritarianism, certainly, then you're going to find that all of your other relationships downstream, both your personal ones and with your government, are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, well, the government said to do this, like, Fuck the goddamn government, dude. Right. What are you talking about? Like, we we built this country not on rock and roll, but on fuck you, right? It <laughs> yes. was on it, literally on fuck you. Everybody except for Alexander Hamilton, who was an absolute cunt, by the mm -hmm. way, um, uh, uh, was all where they were all on the same page. Like, hey, you know what? Uh, no kings, no queens, no royalty, no caste, none of this bullshit. Um, you come to Congress, do your job for a couple of years, and you fuck off, right. right? That was the plan. And by the way, uh, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments were supposed to assure that the federal government never became strong. That was the point of it, right? Obviously, that didn't work out too No, well. not at all. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, but that was the point. Like, we know, we know exactly. I, I don't want to hear any of this uh, uh, meandering fucking uh, nonsense about, uh, whoa, how the, the framers didn't know what the world would develop. And like, shut the fuck up. Here's what they knew. They knew that individual liberty and personal entrepreneurship are the ultimate inoculation to tyrannical bullshit. That's what they knew. And that's why they set the government up the way they did. So I think it's a real problem that people have slipped back into. I think everybody was on – the 90s were good. People were on cruise control. Fair enough, right? That's going to happen. Yeah. But then – 9-11 happens and people but their buttholes tighten up and they're like you know what we should give the government a little bit of power so they can solve this problem for us it's like no that was that is then and will always be a mistake that that is never the answer and in my life that was the moment where you look at two different worlds like that was a very pivotal point where there was before 9-11 and after 9-11 and it's been a domino effect since then well and that's why like when i say I don't think conservatism is a thing anymore. The people that call themselves conservative now, and I mean the politicians, the bureaucrats that are unelected, but also the people who supported this shit back in the day. All of these conservatives that I know that are older, you know, the generation ahead of ours, they all supported the Patriot Act. They all supported Iraq, right? Mm -hmm. But those that was a nation-building expedition, which is anti-conservative, and then it was the largest expansion of the federal government history. You That's have to point. take some fucking responsibility for that, yeah. right? Um, 150,000 new federal employees were created overnight. That's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Because what do people who work for the government not do? Rebel against the government, which is your goddamn right and duty as an American citizen, right? Like, it, it is – it's yin-yang. It's balance. It's like nu nuclear fusion in a, in a star – is exploding all the time, but gravity keeps it contained, right? right? That's the balance of life. And without your rebellious spirit, that's why that's what made this country so great. It's just like, nah, nah, fuck you, not doing that. Um, no, I mean, look at what's happened. I mean, now you have more IRS agents to take money from people who legally do pay taxes, but at the same time, you're taking printed money. You have casinos that are allowed in every single town that's not mm -hmm. doing well. So they can market, make money off of that tax. Well, why There's can't a, I, you and I print money to pay our taxes? What's the problem? They do. Yeah. I, well, and also people are talking no, about people are talking funny. about like <laughs> like <laughs> just show up with a bunch of like wet bills. Like, yeah, here's, like, here, you go. here you go, guys. I should it should keep me going for a yeah. couple of years. I just actually. made it like you. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It, it's uh, it's tr yeah. It's just. I don't know. It's sort of tragic. And what do you what do you do when you have all these people coming in to take money from people, 
they allow gambling, they allow addictions, they're now allowing weed everywhere, and I'm not saying that's good or bad, I'm mm. just saying it is allowed, it is a distraction, and mm. it is a distraction that messes with your head, sure. liquor, yeah. gambling, <clears throat> all this stuff that they can tax yeah. insanely. I mean, it's the Coliseum, right? Dude, we're just being allowed mm. to do all, like, and it's killing us. Go near any area that has a casino. Mm. I'm not saying that it's, uh, <clears throat> you can't gamble, I'm saying there's they deliberately put it into certain areas so they can tax the shit out of it. Yeah. And you can take the last of what people have based on an addiction. And I mean, I have an addictive personality. I get it. But it's like, I understand wanting to escape. Mm. But when you're allowing people to escape all the time with whatever they want, and I guess that is your own personal choice. But when you're profiting off of it, that scares me when the government's like, well, this is a good way for me to make money. When the state is profiting on it. That's because my problem. people like I have these conversations with uh, liberals and leftist folks. And they're like, well, the government is going to do this or do that. I'm like, the government doesn't do anything, right? They steal money from us, and then they pay a private contractor to do it. Mm -hmm. So they just rob you to do what the fuck they want to do. That's not the same. Like, who's going to build the roads if the government's gone? The same dudes, the same Mexicans that are building the roads now. Well, yeah, and who's building We're them We're just going to pay them directly for a lower amount of money. Right. Like, <laughs> it's like, fuck, man. The roads suck. All over the yeah, country, sure. nobody. Well, that's because we're spending sixty to a hundred percent more on them than we should be. Of right? course, because we just keep repairing them mm -hmm. in order, and that's what you hear. Like, well, we have to go with last year's budget, or else we won't get it. How about fuck mm -hmm. you? Well, that's why I always tell people like, there's there's a massive barrier to entry for people who want to get involved. Sorry, are we allowed to swear? I yeah, should have. Okay. I, I've been calling people cunts this whole time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just heard you say cunt, which uh, Alexander Hamilton was. Yeah, he was an absolute yeah. cunt, yeah. Um, <clears throat> there, there's a high barrier to entry for people because people say, well, when's it going to be time to do something or this or that? Like, stop thinking in those terms. It's, this is not – get out of this microwave culture, this take a pill for it culture. And uh, one of my dear friends, Tim Kennedy, says this all the time. This, there are a thousand little decisions you make right every day mm -hmm. that determine your outcome and every time you capitulate to any kind of authority it becomes a problem for you there's a price to pay for that shit sometimes just saying no and doing without that thing is more powerful than anything else right like it's one of the most powerful things that the collective can can do is just to say no right and there's two examples of it working really really well one is california massachusetts with regard to marriage equality and weed mm -hmm. right they were like, you know what? Our people want this. And it's like, well, the federal government says it's legal. It's like, we don't care. We're just going to do it anyways. What are you going to do? Nothing right. happened. Not one goddamn thing happened. Some <clears throat> some weed places in California got raided. Um, I think it was Oaksterdam is the name of that place. There was a couple Oakland. of them that got busted. In yeah. like 2012, 2013. And then and after the second one in 2013, for some reason, the Obama DOJ was like, you know what? We're not going to do that anymore. You, they, they defeated the federal government just by doing what the fuck they wanted to and saying no. Uh, and then the second time it happened, there's been a lot of capitulation. We've dealt with a lot of bullshit because of it. But the second time it happened was post-lockdown, post-attempts at forced vaccination. It was the uh, Governance Disinformation Board. I'm sure you remember that. This yeah. little thing that popped up under DHS. By the way, that woman got... Fired. She works for the British government now, doing the same thing. Oh, good. Yeah, well, she, I'm glad she was able to land on her feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, thank God. <laughs> uh, but people from everywhere, everybody from pretty much everywhere, was like, "No, don't think so." Mm -hmm. Right? And it it was shut down within a matter of three months, like the shortest government program of all time. Um, so there's the power, right? It's like this isn't so complicated. Stay aware and educated and say no when it's appropriate even if it costs you and when a when a critical mass of people do that then these issues don't even arise right no and when i mean look at which i really would kind of relate it to with the lockdowns except you know it was prohibition mm -hmm. where a lot of the people just were going yeah we're not going <clears> to <throat> do this we just our bar is just still a bar and it ended up happening where it's like bodies are piling up, people are fighting each other. You know, it became so chaotic that they were like, yeah, sorry, you guys can all have liquor again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of the first times where it was like, you're not going to make these choices and we're just going to do what we want that actually did pay off. Yeah. I mean, it cost us a lot at the time. But that's, a, that's what happened with this where people are like, how did you fly during uh, COVID? Why did you do that? I'm like, on a plane by myself that was clean. And I'm a germaphobe. Yeah. So people were shocked that... 
Hey, why are you going on a plane now? I'm like, there's no one at the <laughs> airport. It's never been cleaner or easier no. to fly. <clears throat> and then when you get off the plane, you just walk out the door. Yeah, it's pretty dope for a yeah, while. Yeah, it's to be really honest. yeah, it was quite easy. I enjoyed it. Like the, everybody had their own row. Oh, dude, it was a, it was the best. Like I flew Southwest almost exclusively then, right? Because there's no fucking fat dummy that's going to come sit in right. the middle seat. <laughs> yeah, like he's almost set up here. at home yeah. being healthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we got to get out of here. Uh, so, but th- those are some really practical examples of how you don't have to fucking. You should buy body armor and guns 100% because who knows what's going to happen. But for the stage we're in right now, just fucking say no, like Nancy Reagan said. But this time, say it to the government. Say yes to drugs and no to government. That's my advice. Um, Now, you're a stand-up comedian. Uh, Normal world, you and uh, Quarter Black, funny as fuck. I've been on that show. I really enjoy it. It's one of the only shows other than my own that I fucking watch, actually. Thank you. Um, Because you guys are are ruthless, and it makes me laugh. Thank you. Um, (laughs) But you're also a stand-up comedian. You're going to be in... I don't think this will be out this week. So next weekend, you're going to be in Fort Myers, Florida. That's the 24th and 25th yes. of May. And then the 31st and 1st, you're in Cleveland. And then, hilarities, yep. And then after that, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 14, 15, June. And then 21, 22, you're in Poughkeepsie yes. in New York. Uh, and then Tulsa, which is not too far away from here. So if you guys are going to be in any of those locations, um, go check them out. You can go to DaveLandau.com. If you can't figure out how to spell it, that's... You know, you don't deserve to see the show. Thankfully, right? Just I won't help. Um, and tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs. Um, yeah, you can just find us on Blaze TV, YouTube, and uh, obviously, yeah, DaveLando.com has every link to social media. So check out the show. Sweet. Well, thanks for coming today. You're a very reasonable human being. It's nice to talk to one from time to time. So yeah, it's I don't rare, blow my fucking brains out. Likewise, thank yeah. you. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you all for listening. This has been Citizen. Mm-hmm.